This is the Cowboys Report. I am Tom Downey. As we do every Monday, mailbag. Answering all of your questions as they come in on the Cowboys Report. With some exceptions, such as, you know, super thanks that have come in in the past. Jose, $2 super thanks. Thank you, my friend. If Dallas will want to try anyone for kicker, they should give Harry Kane a call. Anything, anything is anything, right? He's a soccer player, so he's going to do some NFL. So this is true. Uh, Harry Kane did say that when his soccer career was over, he wanted to try being an NFL kicker. I appreciate Harry saying that that would be very challenging and hard because it would be. It's not an easy transition. It's a very different motion, etc. cetera. Uh, but not, not, not a thing that could happen right now. More of a thing that would have to happen at a later point. But, Jose, I appreciate that super thanks. You're very kind. When it comes to kickers, are they people? Why for yes and for no. You guys can vote. You can be mean or be nice. Go ahead and sound off for me in the comment section right now. That was a super thanks, by the way. If you do a super thanks, just like we give a shout-out for a super chat on a live show, we'll do a shout-out for a super thanks on demand. It's a new feature on the YouTube side of things. Click the thanks icon, edit your message. We appreciate all of your support here at the Cowboys Report. So if you super thanks, we'll give you a shout-out. Alan Williams the second over, under. How many sacks do you think Micah will have, Tom? Um... 13 in, as a first-year player, 13.5 last year. 14 as the over-under number, which, by the way, super high over-under number. <laughs> That's, like, you know, reflective of a potential defensive player of the year candidate. So I'll go 14. I still might take the over. I'm a mod god of Cod. Should we move on from our center, Tyler Biotish, given he struggles in the past protection and lack size in the run game? I'm overall fine with what you've had from Biotish. He's not Travis Frederick. Very few are. Is he a bad center? I don't think so. Is he a premier center? I also don't think so. I think he's average to above average, which for what he's getting paid is awesome. He's getting paid like, like 2.5 million bucks something this year. Like five and over the course of his career. Now that's that's awesome contract value. Now, he could get seven, eight, nine, ten million on the open market. Do you want to pay him that? I'm not so sure. So for now, keep him. Next offseason, let's see what happens. Cannon Hope. You think CeeDee Lamb is a top 10 wideout? I do think that. And look, there is a lot of great wide receivers. I mean, no disrespect. I mean, look around the NFC East, right? Two great Eagles receivers, Terry McLaurin, CeeDee Lamb. That's four. Four guys you can legitimately argue are top 10 guys. I'm still putting Lamb in that conversation. I think he is a top 10 receiver. The growth, the breakout he had last year, I think he's a fantastic football player. I have very few complaints about him. Yeah, he's a top 10 guy for me. From Zeno Saiyan, I know Zeke isn't what he used to be, but it still shocks me he hasn't been signed. He's a fullback. Still had 12 touchdowns and almost 100 yards. Here's the issue you run into. Does he want to be a fullback? That's a very different role. That, that, that's a lot more blocking, which, of course, he's done. I don't know if that's what Zeke wants. Zeke, from what I've been told, has done a really good job of managing his money. He's, he's actually he's, he's, in, he's in good shape there, some smart investments. So he doesn't need to just play for anything. He probably wants a decent-sized contract still as a sign of respect for a certain extent. The other issue you, you run into is, yeah, he had almost 900 yards. He wasn't efficient. The running back market is brutal these days. It, it really is, which makes it dicey for guys like Zeke and even other guys across the NFL. From Courtney Powers, how worried are you about Dak's INTs? Interceptions are bad. We all know that. Uh, I don't think anyone argues against that. I would be more concerned if, historically speaking, Dak didn't turn the ball over a lot. Yes, there are points he's aggressive. It's worth it because the offense has been fantastic in the last couple of seasons with him. And a lot of those were just straight up not Dak's fault. So, in general, yeah, interceptions concern me. The way they got there, I'm not as about it being repeatable next year, if that makes sense. So what is your confidence level? I'm sure this will not be a divisive question at all. Confidence level in Dak Prescott. Scale it from 1 to 10. 1 on the low end, 10 on the high end. The ad break comes here on YouTube. Take advantage of it and go vote right now at the pinned poll. All right, next up from Jerome Nichols. Is there an O-line guy we could trade for? Is it a chance we could just sign Pollard to a deal? Cook is better than our backs except Hopkins. Uh, and Hopkins better on receivers for Lamb. We need a kicker all-line starter because Tyron get hurt. Okay, so there's a lot going on there, Jer uh, Jerome. Shot coming after the mailbag cut. Um, 
Tough to find an offensive lineman. Call the Steelers about a guard. They've got guard depth. James Daniels, maybe. Uh, Kevin Dotson could be an area to explore there. Pollard for a deal. I possible. Um, the running back market's bad, and that's that is a makes it tough to, to get a deal done from both sides' perspective. Uh, Cook is better than the backs. Yes, I agree. But how much do you want to pay him to be a backup to Pollard? Fair question. Hopkins better receivers except for Lamb. I would agree. Cowboys do not. That's why they restructured Gallup and took Cooks over over Hopkins. And yes, agree on kicker and offensive line. Thank you, Jerome. Zeno saying, maybe get get Jeff Heath as the kicker. The OGs get it. That that is the goat, Jeff Heath. By the way, uh, the emergency here did a decent job. Uh, we can do the uh, the Chad Johnson as the kicker as well. Would always be a a fun idea there for the Cowboys. But yeah. Uh, the OGs do get it, you know. You're absolutely right. I, I appreciate that, my friend. All right, next up from the Ponsick Show. Do you believe the Cowboys will lead the league in sacks this year? If they're not first, they're going to be super close to it. Uh, the secondary's better, which will make it easier on the front seven, front five, front six, however many guys that they want to end up blitzing. Front seven, I guess we'll call it. Uh, you're bringing back everybody, for the most part, from your pass rush last year. You should have some guys that be better, like Sam Williams. Mod Smith should help you a little bit there, too. So, yeah. Uh, maybe they finish, like, third or second. But they will be among the league leaders once again in sacks. And maybe more importantly, pressures and pressure rate. From Brian? Brian? Leonard, do you trade a second for Chase Young? No. Um, a, I don't think the commanders would ever trade him in division. Because, you know, Dan's still their owner, technically. You don't like uh, that. That would not go over very well. Uh, Ron Rivera wants to save his job this year. They have to win. So it would only be a trade deadline deal. I'm not moving up a second for a... Because Young would be, would be a rental. And he hasn't been good for two years now. Um, nine games played. Three games played. Two sacks. That's it. Like, that's, that's like Chauncey Golston stats. Which is wild to say out loud, but also be true. Um, now, there's more talent there, more untapped talent, but I would be cautious to assume that, you know, the immediate dividends is worthwhile in terms of giving you know, a, a big pick in the second rounder. Now, if there's a bunch of injuries, could revisit, but right now, I'm, I'm passing on that one. All right, name a player who you want to trade for. Put on your GM caps, your, your armchair GMs. What player would you trade for? Drop that name for me in the comments. From Ian, does Pollard's guaranteed $10 million affect the Cowboys in negotiations with these free agent backs? Yes, it does. Um, because you're it's less of like the exact figure and more of he's your guy and he's being paid like it. So you do want to balance your roster and, and your books in terms of we're paying Tony Pollard $10 million. Still got some dead money from Zeke Elliott. Do we want to be investing another big contract in a running back when Tony Pollard is good? It's the fact that Pollard has been really good for the Cowboys and he's he's fairly expensive. If it was only one of those things, would be a different conversation in the backfield. But Pollard's good. He, I think he can handle 200 plus carries. Do you need to pay a premium on insurance when if knock on what something happens, you could always pivot at that point. From Vince. How should the slash will the Cowboys use Tyler Smith short-term and long-term? Long-term, I think he's your left tackle. Short-term, I'm going to call him left side player. Uh, it's a really good question, and I don't have the, I don't have a great answer for you because I don't know if the Cowboys know yet, frankly, what they're going to do. Can Tyron Smith stay healthy for more than five games? Is there a left guard option beyond Tyler Smith? Like, honestly, I think the backup I feel most confident in is Matt Well, let's go, who's played right tackle, left guard at camp. Can he play left guard full time? Or not camp, uh, OTA's mini camp. Maybe, but I'm not sure I I fully believe in that one. So it's it's a it's a tough question. It's a good question. I think we'll know more come training camp time. But long term, left tackle, short term, we'll see. If you guys want your questions answered live got to be subscribed. It's the only way. Otherwise, you won't get a notification when we go live every Monday. You'll miss out on videos or you'll miss out on breaking news. So make sure you're subbed so you don't miss out.
Little troll from Turner Boys by Dak Prescott. Trade Tank and a, oh, it's not a troll. I, sorry, I read that as Dak the first time. Now it's a very different conversation. Uh, trade Tank Lawrence and a third round pick for Daniil Hunter, who says no. I think the Cowboys would say no, not because of anything about Tank or Hunter the players. I think that's more of a contract issue. Because you've, you've already given Tank a pretty good size deal. You're, you'd be eating a bunch of dead money there. And you would have to give Hunter a massive new contract. You're talking probably, you know, upwards of $20 million a year. Maybe you get lucky it's 15 or 18 or something. I don't think Dallas wants to do that knowing that down the road they've got other big contracts still to come. From Ruben, starting Vaughn or Jones running back, use TP at wide receiver. I would not go that route. Um, and I, I didn't even deuce Vaughn. It might have been a... a, a Text to, to or speech to text thing there. I'm playing Tony Pollard at running back. I'm still gonna put him in the slot sometimes, but I do think the value and what he does best is still being a pure runner. So get some two back sets out there. Totally down. But I already have three good good receivers. I'm not sure that Tony Pollard is a better receiver than a healthy Gallup in Cooks and Lance. Super chat time from Elmatic Seven. Does Deuce give you Lance Dunbar vibes? Overhyped. Um, I don't get the same Dunbar vibes. I think du I think Dunbar was a Dunbar was almost a receiver. We had the same the same Pollard question about being a receiver. Dunbar kind of was a receiver, uh, undersized. But I I, I got to go back and look at the numbers. But there was a stat at one point for Lance Dunbar uh, in like one of his better years, right before he got hurt, where when he was on the field. It was a pass for like 95% of the time. It was something ridiculous like that. I, I'm guessing on the number exactly. Of like, he's out there. It's pass play. There was They did not run the football with him. It was just, it was pass against pass protection for that, for that one year. Deuce Vaughn is much better as a pure runner uh, from that perspective. John Park, bring back Byron Jones. I assume you mean Byron, not Brian Jones. Um, I don't know if he's healthy enough to ever play football again, unfortunately. You know, Dallas is battling Jordan Lewis and Deshaun Wright injuries. I would not be shocked if they added another uh, corner for camp just to help kind of get through everything uh, from that perspective uh, beyond the Jordan Miller, like, kind of camp OTA trap that he's getting there. Um, I, I like Byron Jones. I do. I just I don't know if he's going to be healthy enough to survive a football season. And I think allegedly – uh, he met up with Britt Brown, and, and they checked out the, the Achilles, and it was like, yeah, no, you can't, which stinks. The Cowboys do have roster spots, though. So name a player who you want to sign. You can say a kicker, you can say O-line, running back, whatever. Drop that player you want the Dallas Cowboys to sign in the comment section right now. What player do you want the Cowboys to add? We got to give Sam an L in the comments. Because we just did this one from Ruben. So everyone type L in the comments for Sam. Appreciate that. From Brokov. Cowboys should have 2023 first, third, and Duran Bland for Saquon. But New York eats half the cap hit. I think the Giants would say yes right now. I think moving a really good corner, a first and a third for a, a back, to save about $5 million is not what I would do. Frankly, I can't believe I'm saying this. I would not move Deron Bland straight up for Saquon Barkley, which I, I, I asked me a year ago, I never would have said that, but I think that, that's just simply too much. Roger Moore, Cook for six or Zeke for three? I'm going to take the coward's way out here. Uh, can I check in again later on in camp? Can I wait? Because uh, both are kind of on the higher end of what I would feel comfortable paying. I think of the two to not go full coward's way out, I think I'd lean towards Cook for six as the insurance, but that's still a little bit more than what I like. Maybe I'm going to cheat and say it's more like three with incentives. How about that? That's not going to happen, but I'm going to cheat and make myself feel better. From Tyler, what do you think about moving Mukwamu to corner and just the safety? I think Joseph could probably have because he has deep speed and could be used during deep coverage doubling. I don't hate it. Now, I will say that Mukwamu is getting a lot of run at nickel corner. Um, I think that's kind of his role right now is kind of a, a, a corner safety hybrid player. And they do, for that role, that nickel corner spot, 
They do have their corners also train with the safeties during some drill stuff. So there is some overlap there. I wouldn't mind trying KJ at safety. Uh, did it in high school. You know, was a high school safety recruit, technically speaking. I think you're kind of right on some of the speed. I think the ball in front of him might, might lead to better results, too. I wouldn't mind trying it. Plus, who's your true free safety? Lee Cooker and I don't love the other options. So I, I, I would be down to try that. We'll see if Dallas actually will. Preston Jones, what late round pick do you think has the best chance of making the 53-man roster? I'll go sixth or later. Give me Deuce Vaughn, my small RB king out of Kansas State. 